<laughs> life bites. When life bites, bite back. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <coughs> Entire food chain right here. It's <laughs> <laughs> new faces, I'm excited. So let's all go around with a round of names. Since we got some new faces. Uh, let's just say uh, our name and uh, what do you like? A short thing. What do you like about meditating? Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, you can't say what you don't like about meditating. You're <laughs> <laughs> what you do like about meditating. Uh, and if you don't have meditation practices you know never done it before then uh, I'm sure that you can come up with something about uh, anything that would involve some kind of still point of concentration any, any time that you're able to focus your mind you know stream on something so I'll go first my name's John and uh, the thing I like, about, I, I like best about meditating is uh, it gave me the ability to um, be aware of how I was um, playing out my act in the world, and it was allowed me to. It gave me the. It gave me the strength, <laughs> gave me the will and the courage to be able to actually see what my mind was doing in the world and with others. So I think that was. I think that's my f most favorite thing. Other than there's there's so many benefits. I'll just say that we just one, or we'll be here all night because I'm sure that <laughs> there are many people who could say lots about it. So we will start with Marge over here. My name's Marge, and it's pretty much what you said, but learning that, mm -hmm. right? Learning what I how I see myself. Mm -hmm. nice. and, and yeah. That's fine. My name is Roya, first time here. And for meditation, many things to like about it, but something that comes to my mind right now is just quiet my mind from unnecessary noise and so shift my attention inward to mm -hmm. what's going on. Great. And be on the mind. Thanks. Yoya, and uh, I like clarity of mind and grounding that we've been seeing the word grounding. Mm. Kind of good. Melissa? Um, I like uh, when I meditate it's my quiet time in the day and I love to think about how I'm reprogramming my way of thinking. Plus you have kids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So yeah, it must be a, a nice retreat from that chaos sometimes. Sure. Yeah. I'm Amanda. Um, I like all the things that all of you said. <laughs> but I think I really like the moment when I've been sitting for a while and at the end of the out breath there is just this complete ocean of calm. And I just want to sink into it more, but then I have to breathe again, and this goes. Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> but I love that point, that moment. Yeah. Christine, and uh, right now it's the stillness. I love, you know, the, the stilling of the mind. Our nice Camille. Uh, I like that there are so many different ways to do it that if mm. one doesn't necessarily work for me then I can try something else until I get to it out and I can perhaps go back to another. And there's not really too much of a right or wrong way, whatever helps me with the stillness. Mm. 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 
nicely. Um, also, one thing I like is I, it's physiologically relaxing for me. Yeah. Uh, my name is Steve, and um, I'm relatively new to meditating, but um, I've I've found a lot of um, happiness from it and um, calming of the mind. And, and I find that because it is new, every time I do it, it gets more exciting and more interesting and more uh, finding out interesting things about myself. Wow. So relatively new is a relative term. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so when you say relatively new... Six months? Six months? Yeah. 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 So it sounds like you've been doing six months of uh, steady practice. Uh, not steady, no. But, but six uh, months of you know a couple times a week. Um, nice. Okay. So yeah. you're probably yeah. One of the one of the big sessions we actually just did recently was we went floating over at the float house, which was a, a pretty amazing. In the salt water. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I found that really awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really cool way to kind of drift off and fall into a deep subconscious meditative state. So it's cool. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to this though. This is you know new to me. So cool. This is like awesome. Hi, Jen. And like Steve, we're fairly new, and I like the, the challenge of quieting myself. Mm -hmm. quieting. So for you, you like the challenge part of it. There's something about the challenge that, yeah. that is intriguing for you. Yeah. yeah. Falling out, falling in, falling out, and yeah. shooting the cat away, and it's all right. part of the challenge. Interesting, right? So that's exciting for you, that part. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, that's, that's, that's quite, um, there's many people that would not agree with you. It's frustrating. Yeah. But that in itself is a learning experience right. as well. Right, right. It's in everything interesting that, that everyone has, right? It's mm -hmm. very interesting that everyone has a different process around um, what's going to make them feel discouraged or not. Uh, and we all have our a different, you know, basket of, those kinds of things, right? And what excites us and what doesn't excite us. Um, but notice there's a, there is quite a, a common theme, right? It's uh, there's there's something that meditation can give us that nothing else can give us. Right? There's nothing else quite like it, right? And uh, you can you can call that uh, still point concentration or, or stilling your mind or. And you can get those kinds of uh, peaceful states of mind doing things, too, in, in the world, like being artistic or even just being very um, absorbed in your task and really enjoying your task and being very absorbed in what you're doing. Um, but there's something very special about being able to sit down and deciding that, okay, I'm just going to shut the world out for a period of time and, and move inward. And um, was it Darren? Steve. Steve. Yeah. Close. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Relative sort of way. <laughs> um, what you're talking about reminded me of myself. When I first began to meditate, it was very much like that. Very. Um, stoked on the process itself, right? very excited about um, discovering what I didn't feel like the world could show me. Right? I didn't feel like there was anyone that could tell me or, or, or any book could show me. I felt like there was uh, some way that I could be an explorer. And I, I really did feel like that, like an explorer, like, um, you know, where no man has gone before, right? Where no woman has gone before. Like, like that place uh, somewhere deep inside of myself that was undiscovered country. And, and sure, maybe um, a book or a teacher could say, okay, try this, try that. But it was going to be up to me. And that, like you were saying, Camille, um, there's so many ways that you can do it. And... I truly, in my experience, most of the sort of skill that you're going to get from this is that willpower. It is the decision that you, because there's a million ways to meditate, 
There's a million ways to do it. And uh, if you want it bad enough, what it will work out. You know, it'll work out. You'll find you can you'll plumb the depths of your mind. You know, you can get to these deep places. Um, and how is it that, like, I, I don't know, how many people in this room would you say? Would you consider yourself that you have a, like a, a regular meditation practice? You can put up your hand if you want to say, yeah. We call it trying. You call it trying, yeah. Me regular. And when you say regular practice, do you think is that like daily or is that weekly? Is that daily? Daily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Daily, pretty regular. Right? Not necessarily sitting like it is maybe doing something, right. but at the same time trying. But you're aware that you're, yes. you're, you've, you've shifted the way yes. that you're thinking to, to know, okay, I am in this kind of, I'm doing this now, yeah. Um, cool. One thing that can help with uh, getting going is journaling your meditations. Like, like going and getting yourself a nice you know, fancy journal book or something and then um, starting to write out the dates and times of your meditations and uh, sort of log what you may have experienced or what, you know, how still your mind was. You know what's actually quite good is um, if you write down also how much sleep you had the night before, what you ate, right? And you can write down, because then you'll, you'll start to notice a pattern, like, okay, maybe I shouldn't eat lasagna before I meditate. And you'll start to see, okay, yeah, well, yeah, I meditate really well on an empty stomach, or I meditate, or, if, or I'm more agitated on an empty stomach. And in, because it's a, it's a skill like anything else. And to become a very, very good meditator and what is that exactly? A very, very good meditator is someone who, at, in a moment's notice, can just sit down and go right into a, a deep state of meditation and not experience um, dullness, like sleepiness, and not experience agitation. And that takes um, year. That can take years, years of willful sitting, <laughs> and uh, it's helpful if you start to feel the positive results because then you're going to want more you're going to want more because because we're creatures of desire right? so if you have a practice where you're doing it uh, weekly or three times a week if you try to push yourself into doing it daily um, you'll notice an exponential difference in your the power of your concentration and the power of your ability to um, turn inward, and uh, and so I, I've been meditating for a long time. Okay, uh, and at so at a certain point, I hit a, a level where whatever meditation I was doing, whatever it was, there was always a point at I would decide, okay. I'm going to go further in, right? I'm going to f go further in, and you can hit a place, and your concentration can be turned inward, where you can just decide that you're going to turn your whole kind of world inside out, and and decide that there's something inside, like the center of my heart, or inside the center of my being, that is um, completely unexplainable that there can't be any words for and is beyond space and beyond time and beyond even being able to put any kind of a meaning to with words and so but with words in your mind and thoughts you have to decide I'm gonna find this place and as you go deeper and deeper, you simply go, okay, I'm going to go deeper. I'm going to go further in. And it seems like an impossible idea in a way. And it seems like an impossibility in a way. But, you, but your mind uh, doesn't know boundaries like uh, the conceptual mind. There's a part of our mind that doesn't have a trouble with 
boundaries and doesn't have trouble with physicality, doesn't have trouble with time or uh, the concept of linear distance or anything like that. And so the more that you sit, the more that you begin to access this absolutely um, pristine part of your mind. And the more that your waking consciousness can sort of rest in this pristine mind, the clearer reality comes to you, and the clearer that your emotional state comes to you, and the clearer the, clearer the, um, the picture of your path becomes. Because eventually, if you do that enough, you're going to open your eyes one day in meditation, and, this, and the feeling will remain. And you will be able to uh, associate uh, your mind, the deep stillness of your mind, with all objects, with all uh, people in your world. And uh, whatever's happening in your world, by the power of what you've done in the, the hours and hours and hours and hours of meditation that you've done, the power of that will just constantly be with you. And nothing will rattle you. And you'll have a happiness that is not dependent on other people. It's not dependent on getting stuff. Right? Can you imagine that? <laughs> Can you imagine like a, a happiness, a contentment? It begins with contentment, but imagine yourself living a life where there... It, it, first begins as a river of contentment that is simply running through the center of your being and you and it feels it's tangible it's tangible and it's daily and it's and it's like becomes this state and then that increases into happiness so that um, no matter what's going on no matter what life sort of presents you there's still this happiness going on and guess what happy people don't do? <laughs> they don't hurt other people. Right? They don't, they don't, uh, they didn't, because you become happy, you don't have any interest in harming another being. Like, it does not, there's no, nothing in it for you. Right? You don't need to. You don't need to um, blame another person for anything. So how do we get to a place like that? This whole course that we're going to do, we started last Wednesday, but um, is going to be based on two things, two, two very um, basic foundational things about meditation. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to, I'll try not to throw too much Tibetan Buddhist jargon around, because I don't know, do you have any, any experience in Tibetan Buddhism or anything like that? I mean, you don't, not, you don't need to, right? This is, this is a Tibetan Buddhist Dharma Center, but that doesn't really... Um, mean that uh, we have to speak like you know, Buddha heads, right? Dharma heads. We don't have to speak like that. Um, and you know, I, I mean, if we did have to speak like that, then I guess uh, then there's something wrong. <laughs> then it would be like uh, it would be like s trying to say that there's only like one way or Because if you, if you can find a way to do it, and that way works for you, then always work. Then you can reach, you, you can reach a place where you can uh, see that everyone's really trying to get to the same place. Right? And, and so, anyway, the two basic foundational things that we need to reach. One is we must reach a platform of stillness. We must quiet our mind. So that with a very quiet mind, we can have a very clear um, analytical, analytical focus on certain things. This course happens to be, we're going to learn to have an analytical mind that can um, contemplate the nature of how things are appearing to us, and why things are appearing to us in a certain way, and uh, what 
that can then mean uh, for our future reality and how we see ourselves and how what we can become, what's possible. And those two things, they uh, need to have a balance because you can simply buzz out and try to become very still and get really uh, complacent and kind of blissed out, but not really learn anything about your reality. And, and you know, if you don't take your, um, you know, emotions and however you're afflicted about things in the world, if you don't like present that to your still mind, right? Then it's they'll, they'll still be there. They'll still be there when you come out of your meditation. Um, and the whole point in meditation is to try and reach this peaceful freedom in your world, right? And peaceful freedom in your world is going to mean not being agitated and not blaming people for uh, stuff, thinking that people are making you feel this way, and then like being pulled along by your uh, belief in that. So we have to find a way to increase our stillness increase our um, analytical mind. So we're going to do both those kinds of meditations in this course so that we can build them and build them and build them because if you do um, if you just sit and contemplate certain ideas about how things are appearing to you then your stillness drops and then you become very um, you know sharp-minded I uh, should, shouldn't say a tense, tense minded and, and like too strong, right? Too strong, like a, a guitar string, like that's too tight, right? It's going to snap. Right? Uh, the furrowed brow kind of thing. But if you do too much stillness and you're just like blissing out and just happy that you don't have to think about anything for a while and happy that the world is gone for a second um, or an hour or four hours or however it may be for you. Uh, then the sharpness of your mind decreases and then you get hooked on those kinds of things and that's a great danger and I will tell you that I was one of those people <laughs> I was one of those people who um, became very 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 still and was able to completely disappear from my body and from the world for who knows how long long periods of time and uh, that I was always quite uh, bummed out when I had to always return and when I returned my mental afflictions were still there <laughs> you know and so then I learned I learned how um, to use that great platform of stillness that I had that I had uh, built and then bring my emotions my beliefs about reality right to the forefront and, and with that still mind actually be able to analyze okay it doesn't make any sense right, that um, this. Well, we'll do meditations like it. You know, for instance, it doesn't make any sense that uh, this chocolate bar, <laughs> in and of itself, could actually make me happy. And then you go from there. Anyway, so we'll. I'll stop there for now, and we'll start meditating. And um, before we start. I just want to say that I'm going to record, I guess, Christine will record as well, the meditations. The whole thing's getting recorded, but we'll also stop and start on the meditations. And if you could write your email down and give it to Amanda or Christine, either one. Uh, yeah, Christine? Either one? Okay. Um, then I will email you the meditations. Which I forgot to do last week, sorry, but I'll, you'll get two, and uh, and then you can listen to them and try them yourself. But you should try them with the audio. But as soon as you can drop the audio, you should drop the audio, because then because on the audio I'm meditating for you basically, right? You want to be able to do it without any other voice and start hearing your own voice and start hearing what your own mind is telling you the stories your mom mind is telling you and what and then uh, so then I just I wanted to say that so
the first meditation we'll do will be uh, a stillness meditation to, to build stillness. And I'm going to say that you can um, you can do these meditations lying down or sitting. So our first meditation will be just trying to be able to focus our mind in a way that is um, calm. And reach some level of stillness. I'm going to um, ring the bowl, and I invite you to, as you hear the sound of the bowl, to use that as like a someone knocking on your door. Hello, let's meditate. You know? And just kind of <coughs> let your mind jump onto the sound, and then keep your mind focused on the sound, and try to be very attentive and try to hear the moment it disappears. And we'll use that as our entrance way into our meditation. Now begin to notice your body. Notice the places where your body is connecting to the earth, and that's going to be chair or cushion, mat. And if you're lying down, use your next in-breath as you inhale to feel like you're inhaling and extending and straightening out like your spine, or maybe your, you could think of that as your center, as you're inhaling and extending your center out through your crown. If you're sitting, and, and sorry, from head to toe, and through the toes and the crown. If you're sitting, your inhale is going to be this nice um, extension from your uh, sit bones up into your heart and then up through your crown so that you expand and get a little taller with this in-breath. And then as you exhale, the shoulders relax and this lifted sense remains. 
and you feel some brightness has taken place. You feel like your heart is open and ready. Just relax the hands in, uh, in. I always like to do place my hands in a way that I'm not going to have to pay attention to my hands. So, um, in a very relaxed way. Relax your jaw. Relax your eyebrows. What is very helpful is a very, very subtle, gentle movement of the corners of your mouth, lifting them slightly, just enough to bring some humor to the situation. You know, you can play around with that. It's quite profound. If you take the corners of your mouth and draw them down, <laughs> and then lift them, and maybe you can be sensitive enough to what that does to your inner body and what that does to the brightness or dullness, darkness or brightness of your mind. And there is a reason for that that we're going to go into uh, at some point, but not right now. So a nice analogy for thinking of how to sit in a stillness type of meditation is imagine that you're in a forest. And this forest can be any kind of forest. Maybe it could be the kind of forest that you'd like to be in. And that you've decided on this day, that in this forest, you want to completely blend in. And you want to see what happens in the forest when you're not there. Because you know that while you've trampled through the forest and gotten to the place where you're going to sit, all the little animals have run away and they all know you're there, and they're hiding from you. And so you decide you want to hear the natural noise as if you weren't there, and you want to feel the forest as if you weren't there. And that is going to take so motionless, motionless on your part, a very still body, and this attentiveness to your hearing, like you're really listening, trying to listen, trying to hear the small creatures moving about. And in your heart, you know that you mean no harm, but you just have to convince the forest that you mean no harm, so you're going to be very, very dull. And listen. And how you're going to do that is forget about the forest and begin focusing entirely on your breath. And we'll begin by feeling the breath at the belly.
not controlling your breath, but simply feeling the movement of your body as the breath naturally does its thing. And you're beginning this process now, similar to how, how is it that you're going to actually really experience the forest unless you take away your big ideas about the forest, your, your preconceived notions about your reality. How are you going to hear? How are you going to see if you already told the story to yourself? So you be with the rise and fall of your breath in the same way. Every breath is a new experience. And you begin to notice the mental images in your mind. Oh, there's my belly expanding and contracting. Oh, there's air moving. Oh, here's what my body must look like, even though my eyes are closed. Try to release those kinds of thoughts, those kinds of mental images, on the exhale. And with a fresh inhale, try to just feel. Just feel the sensation. as if maybe you were feeling yourself breathe for the first time. This luxurious feeling. You're bringing your mind right into the constant now. by throwing away the mental idea, the mental picture of what's happening, and simply being with the feeling. your mind wanders off, simply relax, draw your mind back to the feeling of the breath moving your body. And rejoice, be happy that you're back to being mindful. deal. Now let's get a little more subtle with our object. And draw the mind's focus through the body and then bring it to bear upon the tips of your nostrils. And now you're trying to feel the subtle sensation of the breath passing here.
in here, if the mind is still agitated, you can use the technique of counting your breath here. After each exhale, you can punctuate it with the number. And then a two between the next exhale and inhale. It's always fun to try and see how far you can get. If you make it to ten, starting at zero. If you drift off, you forgot you were even counting in the first place, and you actually have the joy of recalling, oh, I'm supposed to be watching my breath right now, I'm counting. Be happy that you made your way back, relax, and begin again at zero. And if you could make it from one to ten without losing count or being distracted, then you really didn't need to count in the first place. It's just a way to keep your mind focused. key is to be relaxed. If you notice any tension mounting, let your in-breath wrap its arms around the tension and let the exhale take it away. Now we're going to move slightly back. We're going to move our mind's focus from the tip of the nostrils up to the point between your eyebrows. And then back so that you have a sensation that your mind is resting its center the center of your head. Like there's a very small glowing light in the center of your head. focus on that. You may notice the beautiful sensation of your mind wanting to pull away, wanting to think about something else. Just keep it focused on this glowing pinpoint of light in the center of your head. Now we're going to move that pinpoint of light 
feel like you're watching it go, keeping your focus, as it moves from the center of your head, begins to travel back towards the back of your head, and then travels down through your spine, you could say, and lands in your heart area, center. And now it should feel, it probably feels like you've sat back a little more in your meditation, and your focus now is at this pinpoint of light, but now it's at your heart, near the back of your body. Now, with this relaxed, laid back in your chair kind of focus, because your mind is back towards the back body and in the heart, begin to listen to sounds. But try and keep like this awareness that you're still like as if you're listening from your heart in a sense so that your mind stays so that it's further um, back and less engaging in what it's experiencing So as you hear sounds, try and see if you can do the same thing with the sounds as you did with the sensations of the belly. As soon as a picture comes up in your head, in your mind, that attaches to the sound. See if you can just let it go and simply f hear in a different way. Experience the sound. It may feel quite physical. And it's fine to take a little interest in the pictures that come up in your head or the words that come up in your head about the sounds that you hear because you don't really know what is making those sounds. You don't really know what it looks like that is making those sounds. But there's going to be a picture. So you just relax. In the now, and you're in the now because you're not trying to decide what the sounds are. You're simply simply letting them wash over you as they come and as they go. You notice your mind takes off on a sound and starts to think about what it might be and then you get some kind of association and then a story starts playing in your head. Just relax. Let that go. 
and continually return to simply experiencing the sound. Where is the sound happening? Where do you feel the sound? Is there a line that separates you from this sound? Now, see if you're ready to be in the forest and hear the forest as if you weren't there. Can you just simply experience it without needing to label? Can you let it go? Can it come and can it go without your mind having an investment in what it is? Can you enjoy the experience and let it go? We're going to come back to surface. So we always do this in a very quiet way. So I'll ring the bell, and you can follow the sound back to surface, back to the room. As you're opening your eyes, you just open them a little bit, let the light in, and cast your eyes down so that you're only taking a little bit of the room in at first and you try to maintain any sort of um, centeredness or calm that you manage to cultivate there. And as you open your eyes more and more, you can bring more of the room in and hopefully you'll experience it from a centered place. And then you can start to bring your movements to your body and shake out your legs or stretch, hold the shoulders, or anything that you feel like you need to do to bring your prana, your energy back to where your body needs it. I'll stand up for a second. Shake off the legs. Shake it loose. <laughs> it's good to shake it up so that your, uh, your prana, your winds can start to move again.
So how long do you think that was? I'm well, cheating, Amanda. <laughs> 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 20, 20 minutes? We've got 20 minutes. Anybody else? Yeah, 15, 20. 15, 20? 25. 25? 40. 40? <laughs> Anybody else want to take a guess? 20. we got 20. 30. 27. <laughs> 27 minutes. 27? Yeah. When I was first beginning to meditate, and uh, when I say first beginning, I mean like the first year. <laughs> Maybe even the first two years. You know, it's so funny because the you know you can catch yourself doing all kinds of things. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I can't wait to tell everybody what great meditation I'm having. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And y things can get really funny, you know. And, and they should. They should get funny. You know, we take ourselves way too seriously. <laughs> you know. We just do. You know, enough already. <laughs> enough of that. I know I felt my face like <laughs> really relaxed and then again I was like it's just like tight. Like Yeah. So where does that come from? Yeah, it's this residual residual belief, right? Residual yeah. beliefs in because um, what you'll be finding out is you'll be finding out all kinds of mental ideas about uh, what we think that we're supposed to be, right? What, what, like, what are we supposed to look like? What, and and uh, what we want to look like. I mean, how we want people to see us. Which is completely ironic. Because we, we have no idea how anybody sees us. Yeah. Right? We only believe what we know. We have our little fanciful ideas about how people see us. And they're wrong. <laughs> you can trust that. <laughs> <laughs> They're all wrong. You've never had a right thought about what anybody thought about you. <laughs> you never have. Just, just like uh, no one's ever had a correct thought about you either. Like about how you see you, right? Yeah. Or at least I hate that. <laughs> you know? Don't you tell me about me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you get her. So yeah, and true. it's it, it, if you can learn that skill, you know, it's very very handy when you're in relationships <laughs> to realize that um, that not only do you not know how they see themselves, which is another complete delusion that we have, uh, that they don't really know how you see you, and that's got to be okay, right? That's got to be okay, you know, and um, and that. You know, how, how, however they do see you at any given point in time is being dictated by other forces that isn't you. <laughs> so, you, you know, you just like, you, you learn to let go. You know, when someone's having a great day, they think you're awesome. <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> well, having a crap day, you're not so good. Right? It's not you. You gotta like, you know, and, and meditation will give you the ability to be with that truth as stuff's popping like popcorn in your life, you know. Um, so, we're going to do a little bit of the other kind of, uh, the analytical sort. So, ideally, we would try to be constantly cultivating a mind that... Did you like that forest analogy of, of sitting in the forest? Yeah, that's one of my favorite ones, actually. That's one of my favorite ones. And I, I think that, that that came to me like that uh, because I, one of the things I did in my life was I did take 14 months um, quite a few years ago, and I traveled. And uh, I camped, and I traveled, and I went into forests. You know? And I went into forests, and I meditated. And I uh, was doing that for anywhere from one hour to, th to three hours every single day for 14 months. And, um, I, you know, I reached a level where I was able to go in and co go completely still to the point where it was, uh, I, you know, flies would crawl on 
go into my ears and my nose and it just wouldn't bother me. It would actually be quite pleasant, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, you can get, and that's why I love that analogy, because it's like that. It's like you have to get so quiet that no one's afraid of you. <laughs> you know, and then you begin to really experience kind of um, another reality that, um, that you can't experience with a noisy mind. You can't experience it. Like, and that, that then tags into regular life. Because if your mind is noisy, you don't really get the experience of what's happening around you. What you get is the noise that's in your head, that's in between you and kind of what's going on, right? Um, so that's why we work on our, on our stillness so that we don't have noise interfering with what we're going to analyze, right? And um, also, the microscope that we're looking through is not held with a shaky hand. It's, it, the hand is becoming very still, and you're, you develop this ability to just boom, and you can look at this thing, and you're steady. And if you're not steady, you don't ever see it clearly. So. One of the most uh, profound things that I was ever taught in an, an analytical kind of a way was this thing that is called one or many. Is it one or many? And uh, this all revolves around this principle called emptiness. And the whole, the whole idea, the whole purpose of why we would want to cultivate stillness is so that we can get to this perception of this thing that uh, is called emptiness, or you could say pure potential, or a lack of something. And um, what we talk about when we, we're trying to understand why reality is appearing to us the way it is appearing to us. Mm, and who we are, according to that. And what we're assuming, and what we're right about, and what we're wrong about. And uh, let's just use this really cool looking thing here. So, this will be new for some of you. So we've got to find out what this thing is, exactly. What is it? So, what does it look like? What do you what What are you going to call this thing? What is it? Container. container. It's a container. It's a container. And uh, if it was on the floor, and I, I rolled it on the floor, and I rolled it towards an ant, what would it, what, what do you think it would be? I rolled towards there was an if there was an ant right here and I was sure I went oh yeah here have fun with this <laughs> <laughs> and I rolled it towards an ant what would what do you think the ant would think of this thing what would the ant see the apocalypse, the apocalypse. <laughs> in the form of some yeah. gigantic white <laughs> doom machine right yeah. the apocalypse right um, how about um, a cat. cat sees that thing while well, you move it first. <laughs> I think the cat's not interested at all until he moves it. <laughs> right? What, what, what would a cat see there? Something to bat. Something to bat, maybe? Stare at? In the mysterious way that cats stare at things? <laughs> like they know something, something we don't? Or just see your reaction. <laughs> What's that? Just to, something to push off the counter just to get just reaction to, out of you. Just to see what you do, just right? Just get some attention. Yeah. How about a dog? Chew toy for sure. Chew toy. Yeah. Yeah, my dog for sure. You know, that's funny. Um, my dog, um, I don't see much anymore, but he spent, he loved to chew things, right? Mm -hmm. He spent a good, uh, I think it was about six days chewing on a, a golf ball, right? And it, do you remember, I don't know if they make them in that way anymore, but remember that the old golf balls, it was like, you know, 10 million elastics, all like squeezed into one, I don't even know how they, well, he's just like, you know, and then one day, 
Well, Washington goes, whoa, and he just jumps in the air, right? He jumps in the air and he's like freaking out and he goes back and he looks at this thing and, and, the, and what happened was he broke it and elastic popped out. <laughs> so then he was like, coming up with this thing. Right? And then, he, then he relaxed and then some more. And then did it again, he just like, same thing, just like freaked out. And he jumped in the air and, <laughs> you know, and to like what, you know, for me it's like a golf ball, right? Yeah, stupid, it's a golf ball. <laughs> but, you know, to him, what was that thing exactly? And what the heck went down when the elastic, <laughs> right? What went through his mind? Um, right? And it was a very, very real experience for that dog, for that beautiful dog. And uh, so, so the dog sees a chew toy. Well, how, about, um, how about somebody, how about a human? Who uh, has never seen anything like a, like just say, let's just say let's just say someone who's lived in the jungle. Like, what's that? Airport security. Airport security. <laughs> Airport security. <laughs> yeah. How about a baby? Right. So, who's right about this object? They're all right. Everyone's right. Yeah. Anybody else agree with that? That they're all right? Everybody's going, yeah, they're all right. Yeah. Okay. That's a good, a good a common yes on it. It's, they're all right. <laughs> well, how can it be all those things at the same time? How, how can this one object be all those things at the same time? Being seen from different points of view. Being seen from different points of view, right. So, but when we look at this object, does it appear like it's a bottle? Like it really is a bottle. And it's hard to imagine that bottle isn't here. Right? Because bottle is not here, is it? It's here. It's here. It has to be. Because if bottle was here, then what would that mean? Would Everyone would have to see a bottle, wouldn't they? So, but we don't really think about those things. We don't really, it's just we don't understand that we're doing that all the time. So every single thing in your life is like a picture in your head that you're throwing at an object. Um, we'll talk in future classes, we don't have time, about um, that you don't have a choice. It's not like you can decide all of a sudden, like, no, 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 I, I want to see Chew Toy right now. You can't just see, you can't, like, for you, it's not a Chew Toy. And uh, if we want to get crazy, we could say, well, you know, there are beings if that associate their world as a, is a very blissful experience, like a, like a very high, like a realized or like angelic, or you could say like a, Jesus type figure or an enlightened being would see this and it would be a cause for bliss. That they look at this and they'd be it would be a blissful experience just, just to look at it, right? And it would appear to them as if, yeah, this is an object of bliss. For the ant, it's not an object of bliss, is it? Unless you know, it could be, I guess. You could climb up and see the heights. But you know, I, I, so what is not here is what is the emptiness of this bottle, right? That's when, when we say emptiness, we just simply mean that there ain't no bottle here other than the bottle that we see. So, um, what if no one's looking at it? Is it a bottle? We all leave the room. The dogs left, the, the child is left, the ant is scurried away. No one's perceiving it. What is it? Does it even exist?
So here's something that we'll do, and then we'll do a quick meditation on that. So is this object one thing, or is it many things? It's many things. How is it many things? Right. And the history right. of there's no end, beginning or end to that. The history of why is it now here? Who has created it? And who has created the creation? So you're calling this a, like a process. Yeah. It's like a process. This thing is a process. I mean, we can like think for a second and go, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, this will go out of existence at some point. It doesn't look like it's doing anything right now, <laughs> you know, but it's rapidly, you know, deteriorating, you could say, and, and it's relatively rapidly deteriorating. In the span of like all existence, it's, it's actually doing a lot right now. <laughs> so, okay, but are there parts to it? Is there's a bottom? Right. There's a bottom, there's a top, right? Um, conceptually. Conceptually. Conceptually there's parts. Yeah. But there okay, so there's there's concept but there's conceptually there's parts, but there's not really parts. <laughs> like what is bottom, what is top? These right. are again our definition, right? Sure. Yeah, what is a bottom and what a top, right? Um, yeah, what's cold without hot. <laughs> sure. But you could still say, you know, relative to concepts, there is parts to it, right? I mean, what are the parts? There's a lid, there's a back, a side, there's writings on it, there's parts, there's writing on it, right? Um, but isn't it just one thing? No, it's not just one thing. Is it one thing with parts? Yeah. One, thing with parts one thing with parts. All the things from the universe that have come together to make it happen. Right. So this is the whole universe then? Yeah. So this is the whole universe as we know it right now. This process of looking at this bottle is the entire universe as we know it. Right now. And you want you should teach this class. <laughs> so here's here's the cool thing about this when we look at this object in normal life without like being in a class and thinking we just see like oh yeah there's a bottle right we don't really right there's like we think there's an object there's one object generally speaking right but if you notice you're not really looking at one object in the sense where we, your eyes, our eyes, if you'll notice, you've tried, try and, just try and look at this and just see it as one thing and not see its parts. Right? You can't. The mind is like constantly, your eyes are constantly picking up data from this whole thing, like in a, in just all over the place. You'll notice it, right? It's easy if you think, Okay, I'll just look at the parts now, and just go look at the you know, whatever the bottom, the sides, you know, the writing or the the top, you know, the shadows, the light, you know, and that's easier, because you're like, yeah, okay, yeah, but then we trying to see it as one thing, try and see all the parts at once, it, you just keep, right? So, <clears throat> what that leads us to, 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 to think is that, okay, it's a bunch of parts that in our mind we're labeling as one thing. <laughs> we can't actually see one thing. <laughs> so, 
the beauty of this is, is really you think, we think that we're seeing the whole thing. Like, you know, we're, we're, what we don't realize is we are constructing this thing in our mind constantly. We're like, because really, all you can really see with your eyeballs is like a cardboard cutout of whatever your angle is in the room. And your mind is putting together the rest. Your mind is like making up a back. Right? I mean, if you walked in the room and you saw this, and you know you wouldn't even know. I mean, you, you've probably been caught like this in illusions many times. There could be like a long stick coming out of the back of the scene that goes straight back, you can't see. Right? And then you wouldn't, you'd just be, oh yeah, there's a bottle. And I turn it, and the stick comes out, and you're like, whoa! <laughs> right? But, so, the that's like a, if you take that all the way down the rabbit hole, that's like a heavy idea, in a sense. Because, because what makes you you is what you see. You know, it's like the dog is a dog because he looks at these parts and puts together one object, which is chew toy. Right? You're like, if you do see this as a, a normal, like a bottle, you're probably a human being. And it's because of that that makes you human, is that you, right? Um, because it isn't a bottle from its own side. It doesn't have essence de bottle in, inside here anywhere. It's, it's void of that. So, if you're, if this is true about this object, and this, this simple object that you're, we're looking at, you can see, okay, yeah, it's, that's making sense to me, that, he, that he, what he's saying. Can there be anything that's exempt from that, then? Could there be anything in the, in the world that you look at that presents itself to you as, as one object, self-existently, giving off for all everyone in the universe to see as a certain thing? Could there be anything that exists like that? Could there be anything that you see in your world that you're not imputing the label upon. How could you see it? Right? What what do you what is what exists that you don't know about? So later in the next few classes we have to, we need to talk about uh, why that's important and, and why it is that we're forced to see certain things the way that they are. But um, Right now, our job is to try and get a still mind, and then and have an object like that, in like, in our, the forefront of our mind, and begin to do an analytical thing like that, and realize that well, wait a second, at every moment that goes by in my reality, I'm filling in all the blanks. It's me. It's me. I'm doing it. Like it's my whole world is actually coming from me. It couldn't be happening any other way. And that's, and that's a very sneaky and slippery idea to get because it's going to be clear and then it'll be gone, be clear and it'll be gone, and it'll be really, really gone when someone uh, does something that you think is unpleasant and you want to blame them for your feelings. Because you've forgotten all about the heavy bottle teaching <laughs> no no that's there is one thing in the world that could exist outside of them that's that person right there that is a jerk <laughs> but then you ask around you know and they're like no no that per nice nice guy nice guy and you're like why well, you're crazy you know you're crazy and then then we if we're vigilant then uh, the world as we know it can begin to fall apart and a fresh world can arise in its place, which is, wow, I am perceiving 
me. And because that's true, I can do certain things that can force me, force me into actually perceiving uh, perfection in, in what, something that I'm completely okay with <laughs> all the time. So, mm, I don't know if we have time, but I really wanted to go into what you said about the whole universe. It's really, I, I love that thing because it's like, <coughs> just like you said, this bottle is a process. If this bottle is a process, can there be anything that's, that's not a process? Right? I mean, and uh, what is what is happening, right? The experience that, you know, okay, we can go long term. Someday, this will be out of existence, right? And uh, we won't be able to see it anymore. And just, you know, if, if this thing was an unchanging thing, could it ever go out of existence? <laughs> could it even come into existence? How could, right? It's, this is why we use object, because it, it's a safe. <laughs> because we eventually have to turn this in upon ourselves. <laughs> that's when it gets juicy, right? That's what gets exciting, because then we say, well, wait a minute, we exist in the same way, right? Like, uh, we are a process, and so if everything that we're looking at, like, you know, we look around this, we can only see one thing at a time, but our mind is like putting this whole thing together, right? This whole room is like, yeah, we can see it. No, you can't see it. But it's there, and, and you're like filling in all the blanks, and no one sees the same room. But we don't think like that, right? So, what does that mean? Some At some point, your body will fall, go back to the earth. And then what, is that, does that mean that you're gone? Is this body a perception? Is this body a process? Like, what isn't a process? And so, depending on how incrementally insane you want to get, you could break it right down to moments, and you could logically get to the place that, well, you're like, your perception of yourself and your world is kind of going in and out of existence at, in like, rapid, rapidly. It's appearing and disappearing, appearing and disappearing. Um, a new you. Every boom, 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 right? Because if it wasn't happening that way, what would that mean? That would mean like you were unchanging, and the whole world would be like a big frozen ice land, and it could never even have came into existence. Right? There's something going on, right? Um, so it's kind of like that. Your whole universe, right? The universe as you know it is going off right as you look at this bottle. Because what you are looking at is your whole experience. And uh, everything that you've ever done is coming to play. Everything you've ever thought or done, or ho however you treated others in the past, your whole you know, eons of, of experience is like ripening into this one moment right now. And... Uh, and then goes and comes and goes and goes. And then, so, we need to learn how to really kind of get that so that we can then take apart this idea that things are appearing like at us so that we then start to do the things that we need to do in order to um, transform transform ourselves into like what we may think of as uh, not perfect yet into perfect in, from our own minds from our own minds because you can be a completely perfect and holy being and walk into a room and everyone sees dirt right? or 
know, you can see yourself as a schmuck, and someone with different kind of eyes sees a, a, a holy being. Right? And so, these are the ideas we have to get used to. This is like the gigantic rug that gets pulled out from underneath you when you start to really meditate and start to think about these things. It's a big rug. <laughs> right? So, let's now, it's where it's, does anybody mind going into quarter past nine? No objections? Okay. So let's do a meditation. <coughs> So we'll start as before with the ring of the bowl. So we'll move relatively quickly through a, a bit of stillness, stillness prompting, which hopefully there's a bit of a tag left there from the last meditation. So you can tune into that. This time we'll <clears throat> we'll go straight into simply watching the breath at the nostrils. You have your little smile on, guarding you against the emergency of taking yourself too seriously. Gentle smile, inward smile. Shoulders are relaxed, heart is open. And you're watching the breath as it passes the tips of your nostrils. If you need an assist on this, you can get really um, visually imaginative. You, know, you can imagine that your nostrils, nostrils are uh, sea caves, and your breath is the water, waves coming in, 
I'm going out. But using that to place your mind, and once again you can count the breath. If needed. Get distracted, bringing your mind back, beginning to count again, or just beginning to breathe, beginning to watch the breath again. It's very important to not be bummed out if you do realize that you've drifted off, and actually do the reverse, which is be happy and rejoice that you manage to bring your mind back to the object of the breath because that is the moment in which you are training your mind to be completely still. It's the beginning of total stillness. So be happy. So now let's begin by, with the eyes closed, think of your own body. And notice the mental image that pops up as soon as you th think of, okay, this is my body. This is what my body looks like. And then begin to think of certain parts of your body. Like take your mind and begin to focus on the back of your right shoulder. And in your mind notice the mental image of what that looks like. See it clearly in your mind. And then change, Sh jump over and think about what your left knee looks like. And you'll notice <coughs> the level of your mental kind of fluidity or pliancy is how soon you can let go of the shoulder and go to the knee. Completely focus on this mental image of what you what your knee looks like in your mind. And then switch from the knee and begin to focus on your right foot.
in your mind, what does your right foot look like? As you focus on your right foot, can you focus on your right shoulder at the same time, the back of your right shoulder at the same time? When you focus completely on the right foot, does the shoulder even exist? If it's out of your mind, does it exist? Now focus on your left big toe. See if you can be pliable and fluid and simply go right to your left toe and focus on the image of what your left toe looks like and let go of everything else. Let go of everything. now shift into this mental image of your whole body at once. Can you see your whole body at once? Front, back, sides, below, top. Is it even possible? Even without your eyes open and having something to look at, even for the mind to try and see it all at once, is it, is it possible to even imagine it all at once? And then go to the mental image of your whole back body back of your heels, the backs of your calves, backs of your thighs, bum, lower back, mid-back, backs of your shoulders, the back of your head. And notice that you have a mental image of something you've never ever seen. You've never seen your whole back body. You don't know what the back of your head looks like. And yet, there's a mental image. And then shift that into thinking about how someone else sees your body. How do you think someone else sees your body and notice if you have these assumptions is it possible that people could be seeing what you believe they see even though what you're seeing is made up in your own mind.
and then come back to this mental image of your own body as you see it in your mind. Is it attached to the feeling of your body? If you feel what it's like for your hands to lay on your legs or the floor or wherever they may be, does that change the mental image of what you think your hands look like? Now, picture yourself as some kind of whatever your idea is of a perfect holy being and what your body would be like. Maybe it's made of light, maybe not, depending on your mental image of what that would be like. And have that in your mind. And then switch back into how you may see yourself as quote-unquote normal. This different mental image. Is it more real? We don't know how someone else is seeing us, and we actually don't really know what we look like from the back, or even the front, or the sides. Then what is possible? Ten years ago, could you have visualized what your body is now? to yourself in 20 years. What's your idea? Is there any way of knowing? And yet there's a mental image there. So then come back to your present again just being with the mental image of what how you see your body, your idea of your body. And see if you can catch that feeling of knowing that it's a mental image. 
It's coming from your mind. And that you might never have thought that before. You might never have thought that it's a constantly shifting and changing mental image that you're mistaking for the actual object itself. Just like the bottle you looked at. Not realizing that we're filling in the blanks. And that something inside of us is bottled. Or we could not see that bottle. It would be impossible. We would have to see something else. So now you have this feeling of the awareness of that process going on and how you might not have thought of that before in just this way and you just try and be with that feeling and that knowing that that is what's happening as you sit in your stillness and try to hold that awareness you know, that you're constantly projecting this mental image that is what you think your body is. What is making me see my body just this way? Why am I experiencing it just this way now? kind of toggle around. You stay with your stillness, your still point, and you're like, oh, I don't know how anybody sees me. I don't really know. I don't really know what they see. It's dependent on them. I'm not in control of that. And then you come back to yourself. How do I see me? And you just stay with that feeling. And then we're going to come back to the room on the sound of the bowl. bringing yourself gently back gently gently returning moving your body any way you need to move it opening your eyes slowly trying to maintain that centered balanced place that you may have reached as you return to the appearance of your world as it is for you now.
we're going to end the class now, and uh, this, um, because we've already gone over, I'm going to say, if anyone wants to ask any questions, feel free, and if anyone wants to just bolt, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go any further, uh, let's just take a moment and just have a wish in our heart, just to have this thought that by coming here tonight and meditating a little bit, thinking about um, these ideas a little bit, by me coming here and experiencing this and doing this, may all beings, may all living beings be free. May they all benefit. May they all benefit. May it be so. And thank you all. And uh, maybe we'll pick one person like Christine, so that's less confusing. If you'd like, if you'd like um, the the audio to the meditations, please. Uh, give Christine your email and I will make sure that they get out to you one way or the other. Yeah. Even if I already have your email, please write it down or just say your name so that um, I don't take, miss anybody. Because sometimes uh, I'll get home and I, I'll forget someone or something like that. So be very good. You know, we have Ferrero Rocher.